Hello again. Here we are another Wednesday and we're not being able to come together as a church family to uh, have prayer meeting or other things that we might enjoy in our worship of our Lord and Savior. But that's okay. You know, it is the times we're living in. Our nation is facing uh, great trials today. Uh, this COVID-19 virus has affected so many people and we want to keep those in prayer who are, are being affected by the virus, and especially the families of those who have lost loved ones because of this and other things things because you know there's still trials going on i'm hearing about needs every day uh, from our church family and for others in our community uh, you know the world keeps going on in spite of the this virus invited being shut down in many ways but i'm here again today and as as we're going to try to continue this on wednesday and also a, a service for sunday and of course this coming sunday is easter sunday you know we're going to celebrate easter we may not do it in the building but we're going to celebrate easter as a church and church family have been working on and putting together an easter Easter message for Sunday morning and as you pray with me about that uh, and you know until we can get together face to face just know that I'm praying for you I'm concerned for my church family we'll try to keep our devotions going on every day uh, and we're going to be church as best we can and just to remind you there's still a lot of needs out there I need to check on our elderly and, and, and those who can't get out because of, of this virus situation and find ways we might minister to them and find ways to tell the world out there that in spite of what's going on that Jesus is still Lord God's still on his throne if they will call on his name he will come to them he will strengthen them and help them in their hour of need if they will repent of their sins he will save them and give them his gift of eternal life uh, as I was praying about what scripture I might share with you today I, I'm going to share a scripture that actually is the same passage as our devotion uh, for today and it's found in Luke chapter 22 verses 31 and 32 and it says the Lord uh, said Simon Simon indeed Satan has asked for you that he might sift you as wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith should be uh, should not fail and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Of course, I've already mentioned to you, folks, we're all facing trials. You know, this this uh, particular uh, saying or, or of Jesus came in, in, in the week before he went to the cross to, to die there for our sins. You know, the disciples are feeling the same kind of pressure as Jesus is. They, they're hearing the challenges of the scribes, the Pharisees, and the priests, and and, and they, they are confused, and, and they're wondering about the future, and there's a lot of us. I know a lot of folks I speak to today, they're, they're scared. They don't know what the future of all this that's happening right now is going to be, and, and I try to tell them to encourage them. You know, God God's still here. God's still with us, and so here the disciples uh, are, are, are confused uh, and they're even starting to uh, struggle among themselves to, uh, you know to, and and they, they they just need a word from the Lord and, and of course Peter here uh, Jesus speaks directly to Peter and I you know so he says Simon Simon when he says that you know Simon was Peter's name to use before Jesus changed it to Peter uh, and, and I believe the reason is and especially when Jesus repeats something twice in the scriptures that means this is something you better take notice of. He said, Peter, listen to me. Listen to me. I'm, need, I'm going to tell you something that you need to hear uh, in spite of what you may be feeling at this time. And he, and he says, uh, Simon, Simon. In other words, Peter, uh, uh, Satan wants to, to sift you like wheat. I mean, uh, Satan is... I, I, you know, I want to read this again. It says, uh, uh, Satan has asked for you. The first statement here. Uh, you know, Satan wants to destroy everybody. Uh, and, and, and Satan believes in his own heart. Satan believes if, there, if he was turned loose on us, that he would discourage us and he would cause us to turn our backs on the Lord Jesus Christ and deny our faith. So just as Satan asked to, uh, to put Job through that great test that he went through in the Old Testament, uh, here again Satan is asking God, uh, Jesus for the permission, God for the permission to put uh, Peter through a great test uh, and, and so that he thinks he can prove to God and to everybody else that he can destroy our faith. And so Satan has asked, you know, sometimes God allows us to go through trials in order for us to realize that our faith is strong and, and to make us to be stronger in the end. Because it says that Satan here uh, uh, wants to sift uh, Peter uh, like wheat. 
Now, you know, if you know a little about, about wheat, uh, and especially in the, in the New Testament days, uh, you would go out and harvest the grains of wheat uh, from the field, and, and then they would whittle the wheat, you know, they would rub it and crush it somehow, and they'd toss it up in the air so the old chaff and, and dust and dirt would blow away, and the, the kernels of wheat would fall down in, into uh, a, a blanket or whatever they was using to toss it with. Well, then they would take that wheat and they would grind that wheat, uh, in, into a powder so that it would be useful for, for baking and cooking and those things. And then after it was ground, uh, uh, they would sift it so that they would get more and more impurities out of the wheat. I can remember my mom very much when I was a boy. She had that little metal crank sifter, and, you know, put the wheat in there and sift, sift, sift that wheat so it would be pure in this. And here Jesus says that Peter, that, that Satan wants to sift Peter like wheat. Now, what God, uh, Jesus is telling Peter that is, yes, Satan wants to try him. Satan wants to try to destroy his faith, but in reality, God is going to use this to refine Peter, to take the impurities out of his life and make him really face up to his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to get back to the seriousness of it so in the end that Peter would be better. Just like Job, at the end of the trials that, that God allowed Satan to put him through, he was a better person. He was stronger and he was blessed more by God. So here Jesus says he wants to sift you like wheat. But he goes on to say, but I have prayed for you. Can you imagine that Jesus talking directly to Peter and saying, Peter, I prayed for you. I ask God to strengthen you. I ask God to help you so that you will come through on the other side and your faith will be stronger than it was when it was started. Never forget that Jesus is our intercessor in heaven. He is our great high priest. When we pray, He hears our prayers. And He uh, uh, translates our prayers before the Father. He shares uh, our prayers with the Father. He, he asks for God, God's help and strength in our lives. No matter what we are facing in life, thank God that He prayed for us. And at this time, remember, we are to pray for each other. As we lift up each other's need and, and, and we pray for others' strength and pray for help for our world and our nation and especially those individuals who are suffering at this time, Jesus hears our prayers and He shares them with the Father and, and by faith, he answers our prayers. And so our prayers are important. Keep praying, keep helping, keep strengthening uh, each other and know that through prayer we will have the victory. We will get through this time together. And he goes on to say, he prayed that his faith should not fail. You know, Peter failed miserably. In fact, in the same uh, a passage, uh, uh, just a few, a couple of verses later, Jesus tells Peter that you know that you know Peter goes to Jesus first, says, "Lord, I'll die for you. I'll go to prison for you. I'll do anything for you." And then uh, Jesus tells Peter, he says, "Before the rooster crows uh, tomorrow, you'll deny me three times." Now, physically, emotionally, even spiritually, Peter failed. And he failed miserably. And that's not the only time Peter's going to fail. He's going to have other failures in his life uh, before the Lord takes him out of this world. Just like all of us, we fail. Sometimes we allow Satan to confuse us and distract us and, and to tempt us. But, you know, he says, but when you have returned to me. In other words, now, if Peter was going to fail physically. Peter was going to fail emotionally. Uh, he was even going to fail in his face, but faith. But Peter was never going to deny Jesus Christ. Peter never come to the point where he didn't believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. He never come to the point, even later in life, where he did not believe that the death, burial, and resurrection was the only way of salvation. Folks, we all can mess up. We can get down. We can feel like failures in our lives. But know this, as long as we keep our eyes on the Lord, as long as our faith is real in our hearts and we, didn't, and we keep our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, He will help us through. He will keep us strong. We will win the victory in the end. Just like as long as our faith is real today, we will win this victory over this virus and all these other challenges. And, and folks, just keep your eyes on Jesus. Know that He's going to carry you through. When you fall, 
pray to Him. He will lift you up and strengthen you and put you back on your faith and use you uh, for His glory and honor. And Peter did that. He became a, a foundation in the church. He became a voice for Christ uh, uh, for the New Testament church. Folks, he believed. And it goes on and says, Now also he says here, that when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Folks, yeah, we all have problems. We all face trials and temptations. But we need to remember, folks, when Jesus puts us back on our feet, when He answers our prayers, when He stands us back up and sends us forward, then we have a testimony to share with others. We need to share that testimony that source of strength with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to share it with our families. We need to share it with our neighborhoods. We need to share it with everyone that God might give us contact with. Yes, we are going to face trials. Yes, we are going to face temptations. Yes, we're going to fail sometimes. But never forget the God who got us this for will get us the rest of the way through. Share this saving message. Share this message of hope with those all around us. Yes, it may be fearful today, but the God who got us this for will carry us through. Remember this, the God who's on the mountains, the God in the valley, just like the old song says. Keep your faith today. Strengthen others with your faith today. And folks, we'll, we'll get through this. And in the end, We'll give God the glory and the honor and the praise for it all. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we do come to you because you are our God. We come to you because you are our source of strength and help today. So Lord, I pray so much for all those folks that need you today. We all need you. We need you to strengthen our faith. We need you to, to be with us when we fall and lift us up and put us back on our feet again. And Lord, we also want to pray for those needs. Folks, we've heard about other people's deaths this week. We've heard about those with new cancers this week. We know others who are struggling in life, and, and even their very faith may be challenged. But Lord, we know that You are there, and You will help them. So we ask for healing. We ask for strength. We ask for protection from this virus. We ask for protection for those who are out there serving us in and, and so, so many ways, and those who are putting themselves in harm's way. And Lord, we do pray that this will soon pass. We pray that your mercy and grace will come forth. And Lord, that you will forgive us for our sins. And Lord, you will heal us and heal our land. And Lord, in the end, we will give you the glory and the honor and the praise and the thanks. And we will share this message of hope with all those around us. Lord, we love you today. We praise you today. And we pray this in the blessed name of Jesus our Savior, our Lord, and our God. Amen and amen. Have a truly blessed day. Goodbye.